every year, the federal government incinerates 15 trillion naira worth of cannabis. And I'm asking, are you stupid? <laughs> if your budget is 27 trillion and yeah, cannabis is bringing 15 trillion, just package it and sell to the people <laughs> the half bottle of cannabinoid oil. Mm, with the oil. Is more expensive than crude oil. Yeah? Yes. What? The, I'm telling you, you can buy a small one, like the small Butter. veil mm -hmm. for a vial, as they call it, for $55. And it will be finished in one night. And the barrel of crude now is selling for how much? A whole barrel. Maybe they are $79 now. So, and then you have Ogbese, you know, in those states. You have places in uh, Delta State. If you are processing this magic weed, you won't need to be going to Abuja every month to go and be queuing up for the allocations that are not coming. Mm. But our leaders don't think. They always think about, like Fela used to say, now bon bon, now they sweep them pass. Everything, burn it down first. Mm. Canada that just legalized Canada, they are making $4 billion in a city. New York is about to legalize, or is legalized partially. The sale of... Partially, they have. Yes. The sale of the, the license alone has already brought in almost a billion dollars. Just the sale of the license alone. So, a product like that, or a plant mm -hmm. that is such a magic, and you have it, you are blessed with it, you start burning it, and they are very happy to burn it. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Anytime you see NDLA burning anything, they are not burning any Ibo. <laughs> they are burning sawdust. The real Ibo has been transported to a safe place. If I were to be president of Nigeria today, the first thing I would do is to head to the Southeast and apologize to them for the war. Nigeria has a problem. And I've always said, Nigeria has an Ibo problem. And I'm not saying it to please people who are known as Ibos. Mm. But the moment they decided to take the action they took, in 1967 to 1970, the war, Nigeria, having won that war in their eyes, never forgave the Igbos. There is a secret memo. I don't know where it is located in <laughs> government that whenever we want to take charge in this country, be careful of the Igbo. Don't give them position. Don't give them opportunity. Otherwise, they will overrun is a it's, it's a well known fact. Even our parents, wow, tell us ah, Ibo, you understand? Mm. Some of them even say unconsciously. They even say it on radio shows in this country. So don't let us lie to ourselves because except we bring this out openly yes. and discuss, it's a taboo that we have refused to discuss. True, we are not going to solve the problem. It is the reason why the federal government of Nigeria feels that in twenty twenty four. Detaining Nam de Kano against all the court orders, against all the court rulings, is the only way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I was detained in the DSS place for five months. Yes. There is nothing there to detain anybody for. The place is not even functioning. The DSS headquarters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it the same DSS people who are watching BB Niger from money to. <laughs> At the point, Sarah was making up to $50,000 per month mm. of Google ads. I personally wrote over 5,000 corruption stories published on Sahara, personally. When I say personally, I'm the one who investigated research. A lot of people didn't know at the point that Sahara was just one laptop when it was most popular. Wow. Just one laptop, yes. I bought That's Sahara where they give many politicians. Wow. 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 So, la one laptop that I bought on eBay for $600. After writing for almost five years, Sahara everywhere, the politicians started becoming becoming immune to the stories. Mm. Yes, the more you did the stories, the more you know, mm. don't say yeah, that. Right, uh, now nah, my uh, opponents, now in the duam, you know. <laughs> and some of the best stories were coming from them because if you write a story against a politician, he will say, "Oh, I know the guy who set it up." They will come go give you the story of the other side. Oh, that now, so story so just a flow, <laughs> so left, like, right, and center. If you didn't even set up, then go to say you know what yes, you did. So, do. They didn't story. know who I was because mm. I set up like a lot of anonymous emails. You like just, just lover, you were the just lover. Yes, that so time. that time, but some people knew who I was, but a lot of people didn't 
know who I, in fact Femi Farano was surprised the day he found out are that you I serious was, oh he didn't know you know he just one day he just called me and said this is a Harry Potter that everybody shall they say you are the owner I said I'm the one I said what <laughs> I have people who I went to see my clients who are having blood pressure over this matter this is your Sahara matter I said please keep it up <laughs> so he was giving me feedback you know <laughs> so so that was the point I got to I was like what, what is it that you can write about these guys again? They don't care. And the more you wrote these stories about them, the more evidence you presented, the more they stole. Mm. Ultimately. So because the... And Sahara Reporters now became an opportunity for mainstream media to make money. Mm. They will not write the original story. Their own is just to debunk. That's how they make their money. Yes. Mm. So you will now serve them. Mm -hmm. Then they will they come, will come, give us yes. money. Come, come they will come, come, oh, sometimes they, they, will, they will pick my stories because they are all on top of the story. They pick the stories, republish it. They will, sometimes they will not even credit Sahara. They will just see the headline. London House discovered. Mm -mm. The people will rush to them. What's the problem now? You know, some of them we publish magazines hmm. and with stories that I did do, and then they will go and buy the entire magazine so that they are not in the market. Hmm. So when I start <laughs> hearing all the stories, I was like, I'm providing opportunities for people to become billionaires. I have no problem with it, but it's not advancing the cause for which I committed my life from my university in days, the first place, which is to bring about a society that Change. works for everybody. And the greatest journalism which I practice has not made that happen. That was what made me to decide around 2016 to come to Nigeria and set up a Sahara Reporters Media Foundation. But they were waiting for me. 